So, Bart, tell me about the PropTech ecosystem specifically. I know your family comes from real estate. How did you decide to found Agora? And what are the problems you're addressing? Sure. So, you know, I, want, I always knew I wanted to be a, to do my own thing, to do a startup. And my first thing, you know, I said, okay, let's try to find, the, you know, search for challenges, pain points, uh, start to think about the ideas. I looked at, you know, different kind of spaces. I said, okay, in real estate, I have the most knowledge, connections, expertise. I also saw that the real estate and prop tech, prop tech and fintech um, are going through a tremendous, you know, growth in the next, in the past couple of years. And this growth should be even more exponential in the next few years. So I thought this is a great space to really be in. And so we started to look for problems there. And as you know, like almost every other startup that I know of, we've started with one thing and then after, you know, going left and right and up and down, uh, we came to the, to the product that we are currently developing. Um, and Bar, before, we, initial Bar, idea. before we, we talk about the actual product, there are, by my count, over 100 prop tech startups in, in Israel and even more fintech startups. Why? Right. Why is PropTech booming in Israel specifically and FinTech? What is it about the Israeli uh, tech ecosystem that is spawning so much innovation in FinTech and PropTech? I think, you know, being like Israelis in comp compared to other maybe places, uh, Europe, which I've also lived a couple of months in, in the US, in Israel, real estate is, a very, is really a big thing. And, you know, every people there, you, you ask him what, what is what his dream, and every person, and he will say to you, I want to, uh, to own a house. I want to invest in real estate, either in Israel or the U.S. Like, the real estate specifically is really big thing. You know, maybe it's also related to the fact that, you know, uh, 50, 60, 70 years ago, uh, we were all, uh, you know, uh, like, like, there wasn't Israel. Every, people were spreading around different countries with no uh, real root. And so I think this is something that is really rooted in our DNA and this real estate thing. And I think that people now in the tech space also identify it and also see that, you know, the real estate is an industry that is lacking for innovate, like lacking of innovation. And they understand that there are going to be these, these big opportunities of the future. You can see companies like Compass from Uri Alon. I think it was one of the first ones that really created a you know, big prop tech company, an uh, Israeli one, uh, and we work, Adam Neumann. So I think this is really something from uh, in our DNA. I can also share with you, um, this year, in 2020, we've participated in an accelerator called the PropTech Zone, which is the first accelerator for Israeli prop tech startup. And as you see, it just started 2020. So you can definitely see this movement and it's really, you know, nice to see it. Yeah, and I'm, I'm seeing 2021 predictions, right? As we're, we're, we're now in 2021. Um, there are going to be more and more prop tech focused accelerators. And it's, it's great to hear there's an Israeli specific prop tech focused accelerator. I mean, just repeat that, right? There is an Israeli specific yeah. prop tech <laughs> accelerator. That, 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 that just shows you, um, that that just that says something itself. The fact that that exists, <laughs> definitely, right? About really. what's going to come out to people are realizing there's an opportunity. I think it's really intriguing too, as you talk about the history of Israel, and and the people, and, and sort of the newness of the country. You're right. Uh, having a home signifies rooting down somewhere, belonging somewhere, and that's the great promise of prop tech and startups in the industry. You are dealing with a foundational need for human beings, which is where you live where you're rooted. It defines your identity and your culture. And so it makes sense that um, as, a, as a society, people aspire to have their own place that they can say is theirs and root down on, uh, and also to build innovation around that. To realize, in most cases, real estate might be the majority of your net worth as an individual person. That's true. Or as an early you know, in residential investor. So it makes sense to optimize that. So tell me, tell me uh, about Agora specifically now. How, how did you um, realize the problem? Uh, and why don't you articulate for everyone what Agora does very quickly 
and the problem you're solving and how you got there. Sure. So as I previously mentioned, we've started from another completely different direction. And our initial idea was to create a, a blockchain-based marketplace for a tokenized assets. So using blockchain technology in order to tokenize um, real estate properties and allow individual retail investors kind of like in a crowdfunding way to invest in these offerings, but also be able to enjoy liquidity uh, selling their shares in kind of like our marketplace. This was the initial idea. Um, after a while, we saw that there are a number of uh, problems, uh, both regulation and operation and tax and actually interest, a conflict of interest between different parties that are involved. Um, and only after doing some sort of a small pilot and with some sort of an MVP that we've developed, and we took it to a number of real estate investment firms and sponsors and funds we were in touch with. And suddenly we saw that they were all, you know, they didn't really care about the market, the marketplace or the blockchain, but they were very, very interested in, in the software that we've built. And then they, you know, and then we started to, to ask them, okay, so how do you, how do you currently manage your investors, your investment and your back office, you know? And they just started to show us uh, numbers of Excel spreadsheets, uh, templates in worlds. And we realized that the entire uh, back office, investor relation and marketing um, departments are working using Excel spreadsheet, a lot of manual email communication back and forward, um, very inefficient, uh, very, you know, very far from what we are maybe used to from places like the stock market, as an example, where we have multiple platforms and, you know, uh, uh, tools. Um, and this is how we really got to develop Agora. And essentially, Agora is an investment management and back office automation software for the real estate industry. And it's a SaaS model, B2B, uh, very different than the marketplace where we have, we've originally started. And we are selling the software to the real estate investment managers or funds or uh, sponsors. And, and they are using the software. The software itself is composed of two main parts, the investor portal for the LPs and then the company dashboard for the company. And this is really a tool for both the investors to access and manage their real estate portfolio and the tool for the companies to really uh, automate their workflows, have a much more data-driven uh, decision-making abilities and, and so on. Now, you, well, what I appreciate about you is you're someone who's always, who's always had a lot of vision in everything you've done. What does the world look like? One of my favorite questions that I ask an entrepreneur is, what, what does the world look like if you succeed? Compared to where it is today, if you achieve think, your vision, think, <clears throat> what, what does the world look like? I think, it, yeah, I think um, uh, it's not a matter of if, it's when we succeed. But I love that. <laughs> not if, the, but when. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, and we, uh, I imagine the world look like where private real estate investments are as easy, streamlined, um, with ability to see the data and sell and have liquidity and, uh, you know, uh, do, all the processes that we have in the public markets today in the, in the world of the private equity for the real estate space. And essentially providing these tools will allow more dollars to flow to the asset class of real estate, will remove the information asymmetry that exists, create more transparency. Because right now, PropTech, frustratingly, is an industry that thrives on information asymmetry. The buyer knows something the seller doesn't know. The seller withholds something that the buyer should know. The agent knows something. And, you know, it, it's this which makes this industry so ripe for disruption. And um, there's also this rush to deploy a lot of capital. There's been a lot of capital sitting on the sidelines that didn't get deployed in 2020. A lot of dry powder now that's itching to, to invest in 2021. But that much, you know, we're talking hundreds of billions of dollars of, of dry powder in being invested needs to be invested in a disciplined way. Um, and that, that that's a foundational problem. Uh, I, I've experienced it. I talk to real estate, private equity funds every day. And it, it, it's it's surprising how people do run their uh, operations, how, how things are run on spreadsheets today. 
So I, I can definitely see that. I'm sure everyone else can too. So, R, what, um, what do you think about the whole blockchain concept? How has that been received when you initially pitched the vision for using blockchain? Especially as you're dealing with a, an end user who is not very sophisticated. Your, your average real estate institutional investor or real estate private investor doesn't really use technology that much, at least in comparison to other industries. So were you, right. were you, were you pitching the concept of blockchain? How was that received? And let, let's talk a bit about blockchain itself as well. Yeah, so, you know, when we originally started, I think blockchain did a great uh, favor for us. Uh, we were uh, very, um, we had a lot of knowledge about this space. Uh, we were, uh, both me and my partner, uh, we've been dealing uh, in, in, like, we've been researching in this space for, for, for many years now. And um, so being kind of like an expert in a field that it started to have a great momentum, I think this, this is what really helped us to also raise our first, you know, fundraising especially as a first time entrepreneur, uh, young, and uh, with not too much of a, you know, a, a professional background. Um, and afterwards, you know, after a couple of months, you definitely saw like we definitely experienced the different kind of like momentum when, when the entire industry shaped and then you, you, like using the term blockchain was kind of like a big no-no. You just said blockchain, the conversation ended up, people didn't really care about listening to what you're offering. By the way, um, what, why was that? I, I think it's I think it's pretty simple the question the answer. I think uh, too many people have raised too much money uh, using um, I don't know, maybe stupid ICOs uh, only based on white papers and ideas without any you know execution uh, slash uh, proof of concept. And I think this really created kind of like an atmosphere where every people that is using the, the, the you know, the idea of this concept blockchain got mixed up with Bitcoin, got mixed up with cryptocurrencies, got mixed up with all these different, you know, bubble uh, that we had. Yeah, it's a lack of understanding of what, what this exactly means, uh, unpacking this major trend. Yeah. What, what blockchain offers as a value proposition is completely different to what crypto or even Bitcoin offers as an investment asset, which is what I would say, you know, Bitcoin really offers exactly. today. Is a, it's an investment asset primarily, and that's what drives its... Uh, price whereas using blockchain is a foundational uh disruptive technology now who, who who was shutting you down was it investors or was it customers or was it both when you were when everyone you were it was, everyone it was, it was insane everyone investors customers, everyone everyone and we were one of the first companies in israel back in the days to do a, what's called back then it called an sto security token offering and we took an hotel in uh, Eastern Europe, uh, owned, uh, owned by my father company and managed by Radisson uh, Parking. And we've uh, created some sort of a small loan and we tokenized this loan. Uh, so this was a really nice experience, by the way. Um, but, but yeah, back to, your, back to your question, everyone, everyone that had the name, the, the, the term blockchain, and just got to, like took a step back. Well, well, now, now hold on. Now, if you're one of the first, and you were successful at doing your, your tokenized offering, um, when you were pitching the concept for Agora, was it because you were the first, or you were the last, and people had been sick of it and they'd already lost money, or or, or no, no, we, 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 we were we, we were uh, we were uh, one of the first in Israel. This is why we we've managed to raise capital for our company back then. But by the time, by the time that we've developed the, the, the POC and, and that we've executed on this security token offering uh, from the time that we've raised the money and by the time that we've created it, this was exactly the time that the momentum of the, of the, of the industry shipped uh, to, a, to a different direction. And also we've also during this time, we've also realized that using blockchain, unfortunately, uh, didn't really solve the issues that we had to deal with. And because, you know, blockchain as a technology is amazing and I, I'm a big believer in the future of it. But I also understand that there are a number of things that have to happen. Uh, people need to be more, um, to have a better understanding. Uh, the infrastructure need to be more supportive. The regulation need to be more supportive. And technology is not a solution. Technology is just the, the one of the means. Uh, you know, and the saying that I use blockchain, it's... Uh, 
it's, it's maybe it's nice and all thing, but uh, it, I, I also use React and no JS, you know. So, <laughs> so these are we view things. <laughs> it reminds me of when um, VR was taking off, and uh, there were so many companies pitching. You know, we're we're doing something medical for VR, or we're doing something, <laughs> you know, in education for VR, or you you insert. An industry and put VR on it, and you'd raise funding quickly. Yeah, <laughs> specialist VC funds that got destroyed in their returns, um, and VR just didn't take off. And you know, there was it wasn't more of a regulation issue; it was more of a distribution issue, a price point issue, and that VR has great use cases for certain verticals, but it's not a panacea. It's not a you insert the word VR and suddenly you know. It's gold dust. It reminds me of people who are listening to this who were around in the dot com era. You know, people would add a, a dot com to their IPO name or prospectus and valuations would climb. So I think at the beginning that was happening with blockchain too. Everyone's clamoring to get in and there's all this fuzziness. And with all this fuzziness, you, you can't separate what's real and isn't real. And when the dust settles, something like a diamond does emerge, but you've got to get through a lot of dirt before you find that. 